Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a few weeks ago, I made a video on this rather interesting antenna, which is actually a 10 turner helix for receiving L-band signals, or mostly transmissions from the Inmarsat satellite. Now in that video, I teased you about another shorter helix antenna, but was designed to be used with the dish instead of pointing directly to the satellite. Well, in this video, let's take a closer look at this left-hand circular polarized helix antenna. Now, as with the last antenna, the build quality and design is just simply fantastic. You know, it's hard to think that these antennas are not actually coming off a production line. Now, on the back of the reflector, that large circular part, there's an N-type female. And this is where you would connect your LNA, which then would then go off to your receiver. Now just taking off the end cap reveals the inside of the antenna and this looks like a three turn helix with some heavy gauge copper wire. There's also that little copper plate at the bottom of that helix coil which will most likely be used to help with tuning. Now I would not recommend using this antenna without that white helix cover as any moisture could potentially detune the antenna. Plus it actually looks a lot better with it on. The reflector plate has three notches which can be removed using a blade. Now these are there to assist with mounting the helix in the correct position on your dish. But I'll show you that in more detail in a moment. So here we have it installed on my 85 centimeter portable dish. The plastic gray tubing that comes with this antenna slides nicely into the base of the antenna and allows the coax from the end type connector to pass through the center of it. In fact, inside there, I have an L-band LNA, a low noise amplifier, and you could potentially put your SDR receiver also inside this tube and then just run a USB cable to this point. But I have just the LNA and then I have some LMR400 going off to my SDR receiver, which is actually in my conservatory. The LMB holder is just standard with no mounting adapters as the tube is actually the correct size around 40 millimeters, I think. Now, as you can see here, the reflector plate of the antenna is touching the L and B arm of the dish, meaning it can be difficult to get the antenna in the right focal point for this dish. Now, I did perform some tests with the antenna in this position and locating in Marsat only took a couple of minutes, viewing the desktop of my computer or my phone, and then just kind of moving the dish around until I could see maximum signal peak on the SDR software, which is running on my computer. I think the focal point is actually further back, so I remove one of those little cutouts from the reflector, as I spoke about earlier. Now this then allowed me to push the helix antenna further away from the dish and more in line with where the radome of the L and B would actually sit if I was using it as a normal satellite reception dish. Now to be honest, I didn't really see a massive difference by moving it back, but at least you have the option to be able to move the helix antenna into the correct focal point for your dish just by removing one of those little cutouts and installing it like this. Now, for those interested, I'm using the Sawbird Plus IO from Nuelec, which is an L-band filter and LNA. Now that's what's inside the tube that's attached to the back of that Helix antenna. Now, in the conservatory, I have a mini Windows computer with an Air Spy Mini plugged into one of the USB ports and then some LMR 400 cable from the dish connects to here. Now this mini computer is running Air Spy server so that I can access the SDR over my local area network. Now back in the shack on the main computer and with SDR sharp running connected to the spy server computer that's in the conservatory, we can start scanning around 1.5 gigahertz. Now as we scroll up through the L band, we start to see extremely strong signals with great signal to noise ratio. Now the better SNR, the more chance we have of having successful decoding of any of those data streams. Now, unfortunately, most of the transmissions coming from Inmarsat are not decodable using software. But if you saw my last video on this topic, then you'll be aware there are still some interesting things to see and maybe hear. One of the most easiest and popular Inmarsat transmissions is ACARS, Basically, it's messages sent to and from aircraft that reports on various information about the aircraft itself and the flight. There's three data speeds available. There's 600 BPS, 1200 BPS, and 10500 BPS transmissions. 
However, it appears that 600 and 1200 BPS transmissions seem to have a lot less traffic than they used to be. And now the 10,500 BPS transmissions contain a lot more data. Now here is what the 1200 BPS transmissions sound like. Now on the screen here, I'm using a free application called Jero. Now to get this working, you just need a virtual audio cable installed on your computer, and that goes between your SDR application and the actual Jero application, essentially routing the received audio from SDR Sharp to the Jero application. Now on the SDR software, you also need to use upper sideband mode of modulation, and then just set the bandwidth to the width of the carrier. Jero has three little green indicators to let you know that audio levels are good, the signal is good, and then that data is actually being decoded, which is all confirmed by those green indicators on the bottom left. As mentioned a moment ago, most ACARS data is now found on the 10,500 BPS channels, and this is where we will hopefully see a real difference in SNR between the previous direct antenna and this dish antenna. We can clearly see here lots of data being decoded from these 10,500 BPS transmissions, and if you leave it running long enough, you'll most likely come across some rather interesting messages, maybe things like blocked toilets. Now, unfortunately, I don't have another Air Spy Mini or LNA, the same as which I'm using now. Otherwise, I'd perform a direct comparison between the two types of Helix antennas. But what I have done here is take a screenshot from using the large Helix and then using the dish Helix and comparing the signal levels of those 10500 BPS transmissions. The previous Helix that we tested shows the signal level to be around minus 55 dB, while the current DISH Helix antenna is showing a signal strength of around minus 50 dB. So that there shows a 5 dB stronger signal when using the DISH, which in my opinion is kind of expected. Now I do have a 1.8 meter DISH squirreled away in the garage that I could potentially test in the future. Now let me know below in the comments if you'd like to see me using that 1.8 meter dish on L-band. Now I know I've shown this before in previous videos, but decoding of marine safety messages is also possible. Now these are sent via Inmarsat intended for vessels out at sea. These can contain a variety of messages, including emergency situations or danger of piracy in certain areas, or maybe there's someone laying cables in a certain area of the sea and to avoid that area. To decode these messages, we use a plugin on SDR Sharp called SkyTail C. And then once it's decoding, we use the quick UI for SkyTail C application to start viewing and recording those messages. Now it can take quite some time for those messages to come through, but can definitely be an interesting read. Now one last thing to show you, or at least talk about, is that the first application I showed you, Jero, is able to decode and play audio transmissions that are being broadcast via Inmarsat. And that's by selecting 8500 BPS, and then just tuning the SDR to the right frequencies. However, I did actually have some trouble decoding these. It was not very constant, but there is another application, which I don't think I've shown on the channel just yet, and that's called SatDump. Now SatDump is an awesome application, and I do plan on creating some more videos on it. But one of the features is being able to decode these voice transmissions from Inmarsat. Now it seemed to be able to lock onto the signal and decode the audio extremely well. Of course, the audio there has been disguised and it doesn't sound like that in real life, but you can guess where that audio came from. Anyway, guys, there you go. That's the test of the smaller Helix antenna that's used on a regular satellite TV dish and pointed at Inmarsat. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.